What is up everybody and welcome to the top 5 weapon mods. Today we're going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA contest. In particular, this video will be about the inventory section. If you don't know what the contest is, basically mod authors can submit mods to this contest. NVIDIA picked the finalists and now these people have a chance to win $10,000, a graphics card, etc. I'm basically going to be showing you what each mod does, give a little critique of it, and the way this video is going to be structured is the first mod you see will be the worst and the last one you see will be my favorite. Also, just a disclaimer, I tried really hard to get the time of this video down. It's just these mods have a lot of content and, and giving you an ample view of what the mod does on top of giving critiques of it tends to take a little while. So I did have that in mind. I did a lot of retakes for this video. I hope you guys enjoy and I'm sorry about the length if it's too long for some of you. So up first, we do have SIC or the Settler Identity Card. And effectively what this mod lets you do is, well, give names to settlers. So as you can see, this settler right here is named Claire Guffey. And the reason she has a name is because I handed her an identity card and basically that that's it that's the whole mod so if you hand them these identity cards they'll get a name if you want to remove their name or change their name because once you give them an identity card that name's tied to them you have to give them a falsified identity card they'll get a new name but now if I take that card back from her and give her a another identity card she'll have a, a new name again so now she won't be Claire shall be Cindy Hansen. So yeah, that's that's the whole mod. You could uh, go to the utility or the chemistry station and you could craft them under utility. Uh, it's, it's a pretty cool mod, especially for those who really like your settlers. Although it would be a lot nicer if this just kind of happened. Having to go up to every single settler and like give them an identity card is a little bit frustrating, but again, the mod works fine. There's no glitches or anything like that. The only thing I did find is if for whatever reason you have spawned in uh, identity or spawned in settlers, then it won't work on those. So for videos or various reasons, I had to spawn in settlers, and although they although they function properly, like this one for example, I could give her a thousand identity cards, but it won't work on her because she is spawned in, so she'll never get a name. But otherwise, yeah, that's that's pretty much everything about the mod. It does. Oh, okay, maybe this isn't one of them, but some of them obviously it doesn't work on those. So that's pretty much it. Um. I don't know. It's, it's an okay mod. It's in the last spot for a reason, just because it's not that there's not much going on here. And uh, yeah, on to the next. And next up, we do have combustible lemons. So what this adds to the game are some throwable lemons, which basically add as Molotov cocktails. And as you can see, we right there, it bursts into a fire, and I'm pretty sure it is exactly the same as a Molotov cocktail. So how are you going to get these lemons? Well, you could go one of two routes. As you can see behind me, I have a bunch of trees. Well, these are actually melon trees. These will grow lemons over time. Uh, hello. And uh, the way it's going to work is you could either place them down using acid and fertilizer, which are these two. And there's two variants of the trees. This is like a spring fall one or I don't know, whatever season you choose. There's, there's two different different variants but yeah again so you can make these through acid and fertilizer and then these ones require lemons so obviously you're gonna have to start with the acid and fertilizer one grow some lemons get those and then you can move on and start creating everything so once you get your lemons you technically have three different things you could make so first and foremost if you go in here we could go craft some combustible lemon grenades you can also use acid and fertilizer to craft these which you only need one which is a little a little bit overpowered but we'll talk about that a little bit later or three lemons which is the yield per plant so each plant will give me three lemons or we could go over to the cooking station and actually get some fresh lemonade which is just going to heal as you can see 50 hp and uh, it's just like any other drink or anything in the game it'll just make a sound effect there's no animations or anything crazy going on there and then last but not least your final option is this thing right here which is a lemon generator so this is a generator just like any other in the game and as you can see if you place it down it does produce 50 power and uh, as you can see it requires three lemons one steel one nuclear material and one copper which is quite expensive considering the only other generator to produce near that would be a fusion generator which is it's definitely Definitely not half the requirements of this. This requires 20 copper and it produces twice as much. So yeah, a little little bit overpowered, but it also does more. So if you put your fusion cores in this thing, they will recharge. So as you can see, if I could find some fusion cores right here, uh, well, those are the full ones, but if we go to this empty fusion core or partially empty fusion core, as you can see in the top left corner, fusion cores will be charged in 15 minutes. So I did test it and you could load this up with 20 partially full fusion cores and then in 15 minutes they will all be complete so that's all the content for the mod so what do i think of it so i want to preface this by saying oh and there you go I actually just finished 
charging that one fusion core. So 15 minutes max, and then if it has, like, there was only four it needed to go, so it won't take the full 15 minutes. But if you put in empty ones in there, it, or, or almost empty ones, it'll take a full 15 minutes. But again, if the mod author is watching this, please don't be offended, but I just frankly don't think this mod should even be on this list, nor should the mod before this. It does not compare with the last three on this list at all, and although in concept or in theory these are some cool additions, like it's fun having some lemon grenades, I, I just really don't think the super overpowered generator, and this is again a regular generator, so if I, I could attach a wire somewhere from off of this, but uh, I'm not going to do that, but it, it is just really freaking broken and even crafting molotov cocktails from this thing it is not expensive at all uh, as you can see if we go to an actual molotov cocktail the requirements are a lot more compared to a combustible lemon just one acid or one fertilizer or three lemons which you could seemingly produce a lot of lemons if you just have enough settlers so that and then the 50 hp you get from one of these things uh from the cooking station is absolutely insane if we compare that to a stim pack which will give you 40 percent of your hp obviously it's not nearly as much but the stim pack does qu cost quite a bit more compa in comparison so i don't know it's a cool mod it just i don't think the usability if you take your game seriously or don't want anything overpowered i don't think anybody could really use this in a let's play it is just way too overpowered but those are my thoughts on that. I don't know. Moving on to the next. So the next mod on the list of mods is going to be the Alien Assault Rifle. And basically what this mod is going to add in is a, a platform for the Alien Rifle or the Alien Blaster, but not using the Alien Blaster, which is kind of weird. So in the UFO, you'll find the Alien Blaster. And then in addition to that, you'll find one of these things, which again, you could change in all kinds of different ways, tons of different customizability options and uh, all around just really freaking cool. So let's get into the crafting workbench or the weapons workbench because that's where this thing is going to really shine. So first and foremost, you do have the capacitor. So this is going to be like the receiver on some other mods. And basically what this is going to do is give you a trade off. You could either have low damage and high magazine capacity and high fire rate or you could have high damage and low magazine capacity and low fire rate. I really don't like this trade-off because I just feel like it's not well balanced. We'll get into this a little bit more as we go through the mod because that's a theme we're going to see. But then we do have the barrel. So again, I think this is where this mod really shines. I should use some of them before, but they're basically all different types of firing types. Like this one is effectively a Gatling gun compared to this one, which is like some kind of crazy long range sniper rifle-esque thing. I don't know. They're all really, really cool. We have a shotgun barrel too, a marksman barrel, which is just basically an actual sniper barrel with single shot. And uh, there's a lot of different ways you can make this gun your own. Then we also do have different ammo types. So this is where the unbalancedness kind of starts to kick in. This is a really high damage weapon. As you can see, we're doing 100 damage per shot, which is pretty kind of, you know, that, that's a lot, especially for a base gun. I don't have any like perks to up that damage or anything. So what you could do normally is the alien uh, blaster rounds are rare. So you can't really fire all that much. You have to use the alien blaster sparingly. Well, this one, you could change it to fusion cells which kind of lower the damage a little, but not all that much. Nuka-Cola Quantum, which actually raises the damage because, well, they're really rare. Or Fusion Cores, which actually is like a nice middle ground. It's technically higher than Fusion Cells, but uh, lower than Power Cells and Nuka-Cola Quantum. But it gives you massive ammo capacity. So this treats it kind of like the same way a Gatling Laser. In the case, you'll have 500 shots per Fusion Core. And Fusion Cores are rare, but I don't think they're that rare. On the scope section, we do have a ton of different scopes. So you have all these standard scopes. So the recon, which is going to highlight your enemies, the night vision, and then just the normal, medium, and short. We do have uh, reflex sights as well as just your normal iron sights. But we also do have the see-through sights framework here. So basically, you do have these sights when I have this one on. Uh, I think I used this before, but basically when you look through the gun it's not going to hit a black screen you just look in really quickly like so as far as muzzle mods go they're all pretty standard you have a bayonet a compensator and a focuser not going to go too deep into those but you can also change three other things aesthetically about the gun which i actually really like so you could change what glow it has which is really cool so for example if i change it to the black glow when i fire the gun i'll actually shoot black bullets so as you can see right there the bullets are black the glow is black although the sight stays the same which is a little weird as well as if i put on a bayonet as you can see uh the bayo right now i have a focuser but the bayonet stays blue so the rest of the gun will turn black and it stays blue it doesn't look super bad right now but if you change it to something like 
red. It just looks really ridiculous, and you kind of can't use a bayonet because it just looks very weird and dumb almost. You also can change the metal on the gun. So this is going to be right here, you like that, I don't know, the metal parts of the gun. And you could change the color of that, which is a really nice feature to have. As you can see, uh, you could also change the plastic, which is going to be the handguard and the grip and all of that. So as you can see, you could change those to its own color. The one thing I don't really like about this is you can't make them the same color in a lot of instances. So in some you can, but there are different colors for the metal than the handguard like if you just want a white gun you can't actually do that because there's no plastic that is white you can only have all these kind of loud and I don't know almost like all the different neon colors that are available so that's really all the features of the gun so now what do I think of it uh, I like the gun I think it's really cool I really like it in theory but I feel like in execution it is not executed properly so I'm gonna spawn down some enemies here and kind of show you a little bit just how powerful this freaking thing is obviously these are turned off but so let's see right here I kind of maxed this thing out I am using a high efficiency energy receiver so when we talked about that initially uh, it did say the trade-off was clip size for damage and fire rate so I, I mean look at the fire rate on this thing that is absolutely ridiculous and the clip size since i'm using the fusion core i have 500 bullets to fire so i can literally hold down this trigger all day every day and blow these guys away really freaking quickly so that it just gets a little bit crazy with that so obviously you could use some of the other guns this is the beam rifle right here this isn't even using the crazy large cl clip and you could still blast people away and uh, right here i'm using alien blaster rounds but you know it's only like a 10 damage decrease using some of the other rounds again basically my thoughts on this is or are uh in theory the gun is really cool it just doesn't feel like anyone sat here and balanced all these different changes and modifications you could very quickly make one of the most powerful weapons in the game uh you know and like you're not even trying that hard but like using this gun is a fusion cell or fusion core is all that requires to blast away enemies at ridiculous rates and i just feel like there's you could change that a little bit maybe you lower the damage if you're using a fusion core etc etc on top of that there's a few other glitches like when you're actually firing the different bullets uh that's not a good one to tell but uh this one on the beam rifle you could tell it doesn't come out of the like uh muzzle perfectly like it kind of comes out in the top a little bit and especially like when you're moving around it'll, it'll get all glitched out which is just I don't know it's kind of annoying and it definitely when you're using the gun for a while you start to notice it on top of all that just the slight little weird things here and there like not being able to make your gun the same color like it's just something I wish was in the mod that isn't right now but really the overarching unbalancedness of it there's just a lot of ways to make it a little bit too broken for my taste and uh you know I would just love to see that changed in the future I get it's supposed to be alien weapons they're supposed to be strong but they're a little bit too strong right now. So that's why I got the number three spot. So up next, we do have modern firearms. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna be maybe upset that I'm putting this not at the top spot, but nonetheless, these are my opinions. So as you may have guessed, it does add in a bunch of weapons as we are looking up right here or looking at right here. But basically what Modern Firearms does is add in a ton of new stuff to the game. So I'm going to take a few minutes to go over some of that stuff. Obviously, first and foremost, you have a wide plethora of firearms. So there aren't really any pistols. That's the only thing it does lack. But as far as submachine guns, assault rifles, uh, PDWs, sniper rifles, heavy machine guns, uh, anti-tank rifles, mini guns, they are a ton. And then on all of those, you're going to have different scopes, different flashlights, grenade launchers, silencers, stocks, magazine types, etc, etc. Again, this is a very feature heavy mod. Even looking right now, you could see all those different attachments on every single one of these guns. You could change all of those, including some of the guns you could change if there's rail covers, if there's not rail covers. It is very specific with this mod. I'm going to be showing you some of those attachments, but let's look at some of the other stuff. So with the most recent update to the mod, we also got a bunch of tactical gear. So as you can see right here, we are looking at one of the tactical vests from the game. This is the OD, ver OD green version. If you could look to my right a little bit, we do have the winter camo version. But basically, you have all these different tactical vests that add stuff to your character and your game. They look really nice. It's a really high quality texture. And some of them actually even have custom effects that allow you to change things. So as you can see, I placed myself in between the two. I am wearing the 
uh, urban camo version, but both of these guys also have on jetpacks. Modern Firearms actually adds in personal jetpacks as well. I'm not going to show them. If you've seen a Power Armor jetpack, it works exactly the same. So that is that. And as you can see, one of those guys has on a balaclava and the other guy a gas mask. But as you can tell on me, I have a backpack on. Well, that is increasing my carry weight as well as I do have a vest on and some other stuff, which is just armor and stuff like that. But that's not all. There is actually more. So in the another thing added in the most recent update was this kind of ATM style station thing going on here. So with this, you could actually buy a ton of stuff for your uh, different weapons and weapon parts and all that. So as you can see right here, we have some of the different apparel you could buy, some of the jetpacks and all that. And uh, again, this uses all pre-war money. So that's a good use for pre-war money that has always been in the game. Like you'll find it in safes and stuff scattered around the map, but it didn't actually have a good purpose other than just, hey, I have a bathtub full of pre-war money. I'm rich but it doesn't do anything these are all the firearm parts i'll get into that in a second and we have some of the featurettes so these are kind of cool they're basically think of them as custom weapons so right now i have a scar l in my inventory so i can buy the mf custom scar l which is going to upgrade it you know so ever so much and do a bunch of upgrades rather than me doing it personally then you could return and refund and this is basically how you get uh pre-war money you could sell, or one of the ways you could sell weapons to the vendor so now let me talk a little bit about the customization and yeah, there's there's a few glitches, but it's so content heavy that's almost okay. But let me talk a little bit about the customization options for these weapons. So as you can see right here, I do have a Scar H or a Scar L depending on how you customize it and all that. But again, this mod has a lot of customization features. As you can see, even just looking at it, all the different colors, all the different receiver types, uh, it, it's just, there's a lot going on here and it is really high quality. All the guns look really good. But basically the way this works is, as you can see, uh, you can see it requires firearm parts and then firearm parts, synthetic handguard with our whatever. All these different things to require these things called firearm parts. So the way you're going to get firearm parts in modern weapons is by taking on enemies with the modern firearms uh, like weapon so for example if i take on a bunch of legendary raiders i will collect a bunch of those things then i will scrap those down for firearm parts so the only way you're going to get these is by experience the weapons the weapons in the field so in other words like if i want to upgrade my scar l let's say i want to go build a silencer right now uh let's see how or whatever let's say a, the different barrel we want to get a marksman barrel well i'm gonna have to go take on some enemies using this kind of gun get those specific firearm parts and then i can build my barrel it makes you get really attached and invested to the different attachments and basically the guns you use yourself at least in practice but again that's not all so that i just wanted to mention that because i think that's a really specific and important feature of the mod you're you can't just go like spawn these all in you have to go find them in the wild and it's not using the same parts because you know a lot of us are stacked so you're supposed to go get them your own but again in the most recent update we got another new thing which allows you to change some parts of the mod so as you can see right there i just took off my uh suppressor but there i have a grenade launcher what that that's always been in modern firearms i have a grenade launcher whatever i'm in god mode so i'm not reloading but in the most recent update you can actually switch back and forth between the grenade launcher and the regular launcher so as you can see right here at the bottom we do have this you could just hotkey it somewhere but uh, or i could click this and well, just, yeah and as you can see the objective scope be changed i don't have an objective scope so nothing's going to change but if we go to this one as you can see right now we have that if i hit the three button which is what i have that bound to i now have the farther zoomed in scope which is absolutely awesome that feature right there is huge and obviously there's so many practical applications for this like maybe some engagement distances are much closer or they're much farther now you can have different customization options for those you could also change silencers you could change bipods all that kind of stuff are options you could change there that's pretty much all of the features from modern firearms that is more or less everything you could do with the mod it is a lot i basically try to sum it up as easily as possible i have these things spawned in with all the armor and stuff but uh there's a lot more to it than that but it's one of those mods you want to play and experience there's a ton going on with it so why is it not the top spot there's so much going on here why are we only at number two well, the reason for that is it is stupidly unbalanced. So first and foremost, look at, I do have a hardened combat sniper, well, a hardened combat rifle. So let's put it even on the 0.308 receiver. So this is the highest damage this will ever do. This 
thing, well, no, okay, let's not look at that one, but this Scar H does twice as much damage and then some. So we were, I was complaining before about how the Alien Blaster or Alien Assault Rifle did 100 damage per shot. This is doing 200 damage per shot. This does an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. Obviously, it's firing at .308, so that's even in itself a little bit of a upgrade, but the weapons in this mod do, like, just, it makes the game so much more difficult because enemies spawn with them. Another huge critique I have with it, which maybe this is just a thing for me, the Brotherhood of Steel get a lot of these. So the Brotherhood of Steel will, large in part when you use this mod, stop using laser weapons, and they'll switch to modern firearms weapons, which I just frankly don't agree with. It doesn't, it's not lore friendly, it's very anti-lore almost, and it's just... Again, the, uh, the mod does have bugs here and there, like on this gun I lost a silencer when I switched the underbarrel attachment, but I feel like it's almost forgiving just because of how much it's trying to achieve, but still, all that coupled together make me not love this mod. It makes me want to put it in the number two spot because this mod is such an investment to your game. It's such a massive mod that it changes your game, and since the balance is such a big issue, it changes it for the worse, in my opinion. You definitely have to get a de balance patch if you're going to use this mod, at least practically. Otherwise, you will just literally get two-shotted from raiders because of how powerful the weapons are in some, some aspects of that if you don't have good enough armor, and I really don't like that. So that's pretty much everything about this mod. Now let's get into the last one and what gets my vote. So last but not least, we have the PTRS-41 anti-tank rifle. So basically what this adds in is this massive anti-tank rifle, as you can see right here. I'm going to go take some shots with VATS because that's just the best way to get across what it does. As you can see, it is a massive rifle. It fires a massive bullet and uh, just packs a powerful punch. There are some upgraded versions you could buy at a utility station for some caps. So uh, basically the way this works is you could get like this one, which is the Black Shark, and it gives you a legendary effect right off the bat. So at the workbench, there are a lot of options for you to change this weapon around. You could actually make it fully automatic, although the recoil is ridiculous, so I would not recommend that. But honestly, just putting on an advanced receiver is pretty good. We have tons of different barrel types, uh, ranging from like the old school ones to some more modern looking ones and ported barrels like so. We also do have different magazine types, including some double drum magazines, which which is absolutely ridiculous, but normally you could just go with a large ammo box or a large magazine. One thing I do want to give a lot of points for here, he tells you exactly how many bullets you're going to get with each magazine. A lot of mod authors are just like, oh, increased magazine capacity. Well, how much? Well, here you know exactly how much, which is really nice. When you get into sites, you can kind of start to see why I like this mod so much. Look at all the different sites you have, but more importantly, compared to like the Alien Assault Rifle, look at all the different uh, like models for sites. You have totally different models for all of these, and then you also do have some of these combat sites. But as you can see, rail mount is required. You're going to need a rail mount for this to look natural, otherwise it's just going to start floating. So that's why you can see some of these have the rail mount. We'll get to that in a second. Then we do have different muzzle brakes. So you have things ranging from just a uh, bayonets to halberds. We have suppressors, and like which for this gun is massive. We have muzzle brakes. We have uh, different muzzle brakes, etc., etc. So nothing too crazy there, but there are a lot of options building upon what is normally available for weapon mods. So then you do have some laser sights and some bipods and all that. Nothing too crazy there. A bunch of different handguards. But once you get down here, you do get some pretty cool stuff. These fire systems will basically, well, you could read it, take 30% le less damage while standing and not moving and sighted. They also have some which will highlight enemies and boost your strength and stuff like that. So these get pretty complex. You could do a lot. And the important part here is they give you bonuses which a lot of these are just aesthetic but this gives you a purpose for putting this massive shield on your weapon which is really nice you could also change the material that's just going to be green or not green so in the stock is where you could really make this weapon modern or not and uh, as you can see we have a ton of those rail mounts down at the bottom but i feel like this i don't know for whatever reason is the single thing that makes it look old or not so with the wood stock it's like all right that still kind of looks old but as you go down to the bottom for some of these as you can see when we get some of these recoil compensating crazy stocks it does look quite a bit more modern in my opinion and we do have that nice rail mount for the scope to mount on top of which you can still use the scope it'll just look really stupid if you don't have a rail mount and then finally last but not least we do have the ammo types so there are a ton here you have depleted uranium napalm incinerary uh heat mp tandem heat mp so this will fire two bullets which does a whopping 
592 damage and uh, a lot of these are just absolutely insane and uh, do some serious damage this is a very powerful weapon but with that let's get into firing it more so something you should notice about this gun is it uses a very particular type of ammo, 14.5 millimeter. So you're not going to actually find that type of ammo just walking around. You're going to have to look in specific places such as the chemistry station. I spawned in enemies so I can't find it. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to require 155 millimeter rounds, which is interesting, not caps. You could actually buy some of these, like the custom version of this gun for money, but uh, for caps, it you could buy the ammo or you could buy it for five millimeter ammo but as you can see with the heat mp tandem round i could almost what is that five shotting okay so six shot technically a miler queen which is kind of ridiculous and uh, that one i actually just two shot because i think i got a crit there but this weapon does ridiculous amounts of damage so why am I not taking off tons of points like I did for modern firearms? Well, that's because of the way you get ammo. This weapon will only spawn on super high level enemies. In comparison, before we were using a Scar L doing 100, 110, 130, almost 200 damage per shot if we had the right upgrades, and that was using 5.56. And 5.56 is not exactly hard to come across. These 14.5 millimeter, although I would say it should be a little bit more expensive because it is still a little bit ridiculously expensive, it is still a, a lot more balanced and the ecosystem in which you get the ammo for the weapon is a lot more rare. The only enemies that are going to spawn with these weapons are like super high uh, level Brotherhood of Steel, like some of the Star Paladin uh what a star paladin commanders these guys so uh these legendary star paladins will spawn with them but otherwise like legendary raiders don't even really spawn with them you need higher level enemies like that legendary gunners perhaps but for that reason alone i still think both of these mods could use some balancing changes uh, i just really miss every shot but in particular i i think this one is quite a bit more balanced compared to modern firearms obviously this one's only adding in one weapon but i feel like it adds in one weapon that knows what it is it's not questioning or trying to overhaul the game this isn't a commitment like modern firearms are this weapon you could just play with add it in you'll see it every now and again you could use it in some of those special circumstances because the getting the ammo isn't the easiest thing in the world but at the end of the day you're not going to be overwhelmed by it and it's not going to change your game in its entirety those are my opinions on that that is going to be this episode of the top five stat or top five weapon mods for the nvidia contest as always i thank you guys for watching i do hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you all next time later